Praise the Lord. Greetings to you all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As we all are prepared to hear the last sermon in the book of Colossians, we are going to look from verse 2 to 18 from the, from the last chapter which is all about satisfaction in Christ, prayer and thanksgiving. Before going back briefly through what we have learned in the past week, we already listened and learned the three chapters of the book of Colossians. In first chapter we learned about the supremacy of Jesus Christ. Paul describes the preeminence of Jesus Christ in both creation and the redemption plan. He is the firstborn of all creation. In him all things hold together. In him all the fullness of God dwells, and through him we were reconciled to the Father. That's what we heard from uh, chapter 1. Next chapter 2, we learn about the sufficiency of Jesus Christ. Paul reminds the believers not to waver from the focal point that is Jesus Christ. Not to be led astray by false teaching or human commands. Paul exhorts them to be rooted and built up in Him and continue to live our lives in Him, understanding that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ he is all sufficient. <coughs> Last week from chapter 3, we hear about our submission to Christ. Supremacy of Jesus Christ, sufficiency of Jesus Christ, and last week we heard about our submission to Jesus Christ. Paul remains there in chapter 3 that having died in our sins and raised with Jesus Christ, we should constantly try to put off our old nature and put on the new nature by leading a life completely submit to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And finally, today in chapter 4, we are going to study about the satisfaction in Jesus Christ through prayer and thanksgiving. The last chapter 4 is fascinating and it is present many challenges to us. As a believer, from the fourth chapter, we can see that there are a lot of fascinating facts and many challenging facts in chapter 4. It may be divided, we can divide this chapter of 18 verses into two. That is, from verse 2 to 6, we can see that instruction from Paul to believers. And verse from 7 to 18, we can see that the final greeting from Paul. Having given the commandments that we heard from last week about Paul and what to believers, Paul stating from chapter 4, verses 2 to 6. So please turn with me to Colossians chapter 4, verses from 2 to 6. Then we read like this. Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. Meanwhile, praying also for us that God would open unto us the door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ for which I am also in bonds, that I may make it manifest as I want to speak. Walk in wisdom towards them that are without. Reading in the time, let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer to every man. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time. Oh Lord, we thank and praise you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for your word. We pray that you speak to all of us through your precious word and bless this humble servant with the right thoughts and words, O oh Lord. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. In this passage, verses from 2 to 6, we see that Paul is challenging the believers towards two things, two important things. Verses from 2 to 4, he challenges to us to use our lips and expression to our heart for prayer. That's what we see in two verses for prayer, practice of prayer. 
And last two verses, verse 5 and 6, we see that Paul is challenging believers to evangelization. One is prayer, and second is evangelization. The expectations of Paul in these verses. Verse 2 and 3 we see practice of prayer. In verse 5 we can see that walking wisdom towards those who are outside. And verse, in the same verse 5, the second part we see that redeeming the time, the use of time. And the last verse 6 we can see that the sound and gracious speech. As so we're going to look about the practice of prayer. How can we practice the prayer? Verse 2 starts like this. Continue in prayer. Paul is exhorting the Colossian believers. Continue in prayer. What does it mean by continue in prayer? Or what is prayer? Prayer is simply communicating with God. God desires us to talk to Him. And prayer is one way of doing so. Prayer is not for us to selfish ask God for things but to honor and glorify God by spending time with Him. Prayer is a commandment, commandment from God and is to be practiced in both in public and in private. Through prayer, we actually experience a relationship with God. The quality of our prayer life determines the quality of the relationship of us with God. Prayer is talking with God, Prayer is listening to God. Prayer is enjoying the presence of God. In these verses, Paul is describing the characteristics of a satisfying and a spiritual prayer life. Paul is exhorting them to continue in prayer. What that means? Be faithful in our prayer life. Be faithful in our prayer life. Paul instructed believers that Paul is continuing prayer. That is his desire that the believers always make in a habit of prayer. In the first three chapters, he told about the supremacy, all sufficiency, submission, everything. And in chapter 4, he is exhorting the believers about prayer, the practice of prayer. He starts with verse 2, continue in prayer. That means be faithful in prayer. Be steadfast in your prayer life. Be devoted. Don't fit your prayer life. We can see about prayer in New Testament and in Old Testament different passages. But in well, Acts of Apostles chapter 2 and chapter 1, there we see how early church prayed. In Acts chapter 1 verse 14, we see that all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication. Early church prayed in one accord and in one supplication. In chapter 2 verse 46 we read that they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and they are praising God and having favor with all the people. Look at the early church, how they prayed. They were faithful in their prayer. They continued their prayer. What about us dear believers? What kind of prayer life can we have? Bible says about prayer in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 17. There we read that prayer without ceasing. That is God's commandment. Prayer without ceasing means it, it does not mean that we need to continue, we need to repeatedly pray or continuously pray without a break. But it means that we should pray persistently and regularly. Continuing prayer. Our prayer should be faithful and steadfast. Praying should be as natural for the believer as breathing. You do we don't even think about breathing, right? Automatically we are breathing. Same like that, our prayer should be automatically come. We should praise God. We, we should pray, we continue in prayer. We should be constantly ready to talk to God about the various aspects of our life daily. That's what Paul is saying, continue in prayer. Be faithful in prayer. Again, going forward, the next sentence, and watch in the same. First, he told me, continue in prayer. Again, he is saying, and watch in the same. What does that mean? <laughs> and watch in the same. Be watchful in our prayer. Not only faithful, be watchful in our prayer. And watch in the same. 
for all the believers in Bolasi that they should not only continue in prayer but also watch the same. We must awake and alert in our prayer. In, in, in the scriptures we can see in many places about watch and pray. Last year we studied about Nehemiah. In Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 9 we read that nevertheless we made our prayer to God and set a watch against them. Look at how Nehemiah prayed. They watched against them day and night. That's what we read in Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 9. In New Testament Jesus Christ told many things about watch and prayer. In the verse of Mark chapter 13 verse 33 we read like this. Be careful, watch and pray, for you do not know when the time is. And again in the same book, verse of Mark chapter 14 verse 38, they have read like this, watch and pray, so that you will not be tempted. Paul is urging Colossians that not only continue in prayer, be watched in the same. How can you watch in your prayer? Give strict attention. Watch means we should give, when you pray, we should give strict attention to, attention to the prayer, what we are praying. We have to be alert in our prayer. We must always guard our prayer from becoming a form or a ritual. Don't simply pray, like the Gentiles pray. Be watchful in prayer. Or God be faithful in prayer and be watchful in prayer. Watch in the same. Not only that, going forward, we can see that watch the same with thank giving. What's that mean? He told to continue in prayer, watch the same, and he say again with thank giving. Be thankful in our prayer. How can we how can we give thanks in our prayers? Thank giving is an important ingredient in successful of prayer. Without thanks, we are not able to pray. We should thank God what He has done in our life. In Philippians chapter 4 verse 6, there we read like this, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request to be made known to God. Or again in Philippians he says, Be thanksgiving, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Thanksgiving with prayer is the proof of faith. For the third believers that continue in prayer and watch in with watch in the same with thanksgiving. Thank God for answers to your prayer and tell him how great he is. How much blessing God is giving after our prayer. When we are we are seeking God, we are submitting the supplication to him, but when he answers the prayers, are we giving thanks to God? Paul is telling here, be thankful in your prayer. Again, in verse 3 and 4, we see that, meanwhile, pray also for us. He told about faithfulness, he told about watchfulness, and Paul told about thankfulness. And again, in coming verse 3 and 4, how can we practice our prayer? Mean way praying also for us. What does that mean? Be a purposeful, a purposeful in our prayer. We should have a purpose in our prayer. That's what mean by praying also for us. Here Paul is asking two things, two important prayer requests to the Colossian believers. That is verse 3 and 4. The first request is that, that God would open and was the door of utterance to speak in the mystery of Christ for which I am also in bonds. Second request, verse 4, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. Look at the verse 3. Paul was not ashamed to ask his friends to pray for him. He is asking the believers of Colossi to pray for him for what? To open the doors of utterance. To speak the mystery of Christ. To speak about the gospel of Jesus Christ to the, to the people in that area. He was an apostle 
He was a leader, but he was not ashamed to ask prayer for him. The people deeply in need of the prayer and support of fellow believers. From here we can understand that when we pray, prayer should always be purposeful and a specific as possible. Here we can see only so that two prayer requests from the Apostle Paul. Verse 3, the first prayer is that God opened and was the door of our friends. Verse 4, we see that, that I may manifest as a word to speak. What he is going to speak to the speak to the people there, to speak the gospel, the good news, to proclaim his excellencies. As for the Lord, his letter to Colossae, he was a Roman person. Yes, he did not ask them to pray for the belief. But that God opened and was the door of utterance. He never told to the believers that please pray for me to open the doors of jail. But he told to the believers to pray for me so that I can come out and I can preach the gospel to others. In Acts of Apostles chapter 16, we see that how Paul and Silas were beaten and cast in prison. Although the miraculous working of God eventually released them, there is no indication that they were praying to release from the prison. In fact, there is no evidence for, in Paul's personal epistle that he ever prayed for prayers to release. We can't find any sentence, any verses that Paul is asking the believers for the prayers to release. But he asked here that, pray for him to open under the door of utterance to speak the mystery of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Or did not ask for prison doors to be opened, but that the doors of his ministry might be opened. Paul spoke of an open door of ministry in 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and 9, verse 9, and in the same in Acts chapter uh, Acts 14, verse 27, he speaks of the opportunity that Paul and Barnabas had to minister the gospel. What an example we can see here, the purposeful of our prayer. Not only faithful, not only watchful, not only thankful, be purposeful in our prayer life. Here we see a God servant fully aware of the all sufficiency of Jesus Christ. That his only desire is to bear fruit in every possible situation. He never seems to bother about the very very affliction because he is constantly reminding about the purpose and the mandate that he is praying for. Paul wanted gospel to be heard, but he also wanted it to be expressed in the most efficient way. That's what we see here in Colossians chapter 4 verse 4, that I may make it manifest as I go to speak. That is what his desire, the purpose of his prayer. Not simply speaking, I should manifest as I go to speak. Prayer is the secret of God's work. Be purposeful in our prayer. Paul is stating that in these four verses, continue in prayer. Be faithful in our prayer life. Not only faithful, be watchful in our prayer life. And be thankful in our prayer life. And in verse 3 and 4 we see that be purposeful in our prayer life. Going forward to the verse 5, that the day we read like this, Walk in wisdom toward them that are without. What's that mean? Walk in wisdom toward them that are without. Conduct toward them that are unsaved. How can you walk in wisdom those who are outside? Or how can you walk in wisdom toward them are unbelievers that are without? We come to church week after week. Mostly we are covered by insiders, that means all believers. But as Christians, like us, how much consideration do we give to those who are still outside? Paul is explaining here, walking wisdom toward them that are outsiders. How can we walk? How careful are we conducting ourselves in front of them? 
and also around studies. Or why it is important to be a good example to our studies? What is the reason? We all are believers. What is the importance to be a good example to our studies? Why we should be a good example to our studies? Because we are a representing Jesus. We are representing Jesus. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 20, there we read like this. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 20. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We are Christ's ambassadors. We are representing Jesus. So we should walk wisely or we should walk in wisdom towards them that are unbelievers or the unsaved people. An ambassador is a representative. Jesus has ascended to heaven, heaven and his physical, physical presence is no longer with us. But we who are followers of Jesus are in his place. Jesus put us in his place in this earth. That means we are called to be true a representation of Jesus Christ. We should walk in wisdom with unbelievers. Those are unsaved. Only Sunday we are coming here, in weekdays, in other days, we are in workplace, in college, in schools, in universities, wherever we are, we are, we are surrounded by unbelievers, those are not unsafe. Paul is telling here that we should walk in wisdom. Walk in wisdom towards them that are without. That is our main duty, my dear believers. We should walk in wisdom. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 12, they are written like this, that you may walk properly toward those who are outside. There also Paul is explaining about how should we walk. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 12, you may walk properly toward those who are outside. We should walk cleverly or we should walk wisdom toward them that are outside. And next year we see here like redeeming the time. What is redeeming the time? After Paul explaining about the wisdom toward our studies, he used the phrase redeeming the time. Use of time. How can we use our time? We are getting lot of time in our daily lives. Paul is telling that we should redeem that time. We should use that time. Paul warned that the Colossian believers to seize every opportunity to share the gospel with outsiders. That is redeeming the time. To seize every opportunity. For what? Not for gossiping. Not for simply joking. Paul is telling that redeem use of every time to share the gospel, to share the good news. We should never allow an opportunity to be lost. If one, once an opportunity is lost, it may never occur again. We should use our time. In Ephesians chapter 5 verse 16, there we read like this, redeem, that redeeming the time, because the days are evil. We should redeem the time. We do not know how long we will have to freely proclaim the gospel. Right now, we should redeem the time, use of time. We all from, many of you from India, we know the situation. We can go easily and proclaim the gospel there. In many countries, in North Korea, North Korea like in many countries, we can't use the time there because government is already made different laws not to proclaim the excellence of Jesus Christ. We can't share the gospel there. But people, we are here in North America. We should redeem the time. We should use the time. Whatever time we are getting, May try to share the gospel, share the good news, share the love of God to others. That's what Paul is explaining here, redeeming the time. We should proclaim his excellence to others. Going forward in verse 6, verse 6 to read like this, Let your speech be always with grace, graciousness in speech. Season with salt that you may know how you ought to answer every man. Paul again instructing the believers that their speech 
should be controlled by grace. Our speech, when we talk to outsiders, when we talk to unbelievers, when we talk to our ourselves, our speech should be controlled by grace. Which means that we must be filled and controlled by the Holy Spirit. As the word of God controls our life, our speech will be controlled by grace and therefore our words will become gracious. Paul tells the believers that our speech will always be graceful. Graciousness in speech. And Paul is telling again saying that to Colossian believers, not to live with grace, are sincerely with salt. What is the use of salt? You all know salt are at more favor, favorable for the food. It will still give more taste for the food. Paul wanted believers to speak in such a way that others would be attracted to the gospel. When we speak to others, we should be speaking with grace. Season with salt. Salt not only adds our taste, but it also promotes a thirst in our life. Not only taste, but it promotes a thirst in our life. Our speech and conduct must develop a thirst to those around us to know the wisdom of the Lord. Our speech should be great. In Ephesians chapter 4 verse 29, there we read Ephesians chapter 4 verse 29, we read that that no corrupt word proceed out of our mouth. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 29. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification that it may impart grace to the hearers. There are also four tellers who believe that no corrupt word don't come out of our mouth. Our speech should be gracious with season and salt. In the first six verses, Paul urged believers continue in prayer, continue in prayer, be faithful in prayer, be watchful in prayer, be thankful in prayer, not in that be purposeful in our prayer life. And we should walk, we walk in wisdom towards them that are outside people. And we should use the time. And lastly, in verse 6, Paul urged believers that we should, our speech should be great, graciousness in speech. Before going to the other verse, let me urge you with a moral prayer that we see in the Gospel of Matthew. In the Gospel of Matthew chapter 6, verse 5 to 8, there we can see a moral prayer. How God, how Jesus taught us to pray. A moral prayer we can see there. Gospel of Matthew chapter 6, verse 5 to 8. There we read like this, And when you pray, you shall not be like hypocrites. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the forehead of the street that may be seen by men. But I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when we pray, go into our room and when you have shut your door, pray to your father who is in secret place and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. And when you pray, do not use vain repetition as the heathen do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. And last verse 8, therefore do not be like them, for your father knows the things you have needed to be for your heart. Look at the way of prayer. Jesus taught about the prayer, the modern prayer. Go to the roof and shut your door and pray to your father in secret. My dear believers, be faithful in your prayer life. Be watchful in your prayer life. Be thankful in your prayer life. Be purposeful in your prayer life. Till this verse, till verse 4, Paul is talking about speaking to God about people. And in verse 5, we see how he is talking about speaking to the people about God. First thing I will say, till verse 4, we see that Paul is talking about speaking to God about people. And in verse 5 and 6, we saw that 
He is talking about speaking to the people about God. Look at the difference. In the coming days, may God help us to be watchful in prayer, to be continued in prayer. And in coming, going forward to verses 7 to 18, that is the final greeting of Paul to the church of Colossae. As you read the final third verse, which comprises the final greeting, Paul makes mention of several dedicated friends and collaborators, all of whom have he involved with him in connection to the gospel or in any other way. From verse 7 to 18, we can see many brothers, many names of different brothers who was with Paul in sharing the gospel. In verse 7 and 8, we see a name of brother Tychius. Who was Tychius? A gentile who had been with Paul for many years and now was asked to go to the go, go and tell the church of Paul's well-being. And this man Tychius carries the letters to Colossians and Ephesians. When Paul wrote these letters, Colossians and Ephesians, he sent that letters to Tychius to give the chapters that we can see in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 21. And again verse 9, we see another brother, Onesimus. Onesimus was a slave belonging to Philemon, whom Paul had one to Christ. And Onesimus, when Paul writes a letter to Philemon, Onesimus carries that letter to Philemon. Again in verse 10, we see a man, Aristotle. Who was Aristotle? He was a Christian. We first hear of him in the book of Acts chapter 19. In Acts chapter 19, we read about the read about Aristotle. There we see that he lived by writing more for his faith and there he became a companion of Paul. And again in verse 11, we see about Mark, a desert. Mark, this Mark accompanied Paul and Barnabas in their first missionary journey. And Mark left him during the trip. This same Mark wrote second gospel, gospel of Mark. And in verse, third, we, verse 11 we see about and, and encourage of justice. Justice, he was a Jewish believer. He worked with Paul and he encouraged him. And in verse 12 and 3 we see about Epaphras, a prayer value. In verse 14 we see about Luke, a, the beloved physician. In Luke, a doctor, a fourth personal physician and a cross friend. And he wrote two books, Gospel of Luke and Acts of Apostles. And in verse 14 we see about Demas, a life with sad ending. If we want to know about the history of Demas, you go to come and read 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 9 and 10. There we can see the sad ending of Demas. Look, in this verse Paul is mentioning about different people who is accompanied with Paul in different situations. A wide variety of Paul's companions. In that Christ, there was Jew and Gentile, there was slave and prisoner, educated and uneducated, encourager and prayer warrior, a deserter and black seller. Many were there with a different background. This is a picture of us, all kinds of people, all manner of people. My dear beloved, it does not matter of who we are, but rather who Jesus is and of our, our relationship with Him. What kind of relationship with Him from us? He can use people from any background. That's what we heard from Paul's Paul, 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 chapter 4, verse 7 to 18. There we see many names, but God can use anybody with any background. Paul is the leader and his work would have been full time without these beloved friends. This reminds us that our effort 
in ministry or in church. A little, a little bit small ministry for us. Let us be encouraged to be diligent, diligent in our responsibilities, however insignificant it may feel. In Colossians chapter 3 verse 23, there we read that, And whatsoever you do, do it heartily unto the Lord and not unto men. We all have our own responsibilities in church. That's what we see here. Whatsoever you do, do it heartily unto the Lord and not unto men. In, in verse 12 and 13, we see about Epaphras, a prayer writer. Go to verse 12 and 13. There we read like this Epaphras, who is one of you, a servant of Christ, salute you, always laboring fervently for you in prayer that you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. In, 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 in the scripture or in the New Testament, three places we can see Epaphras. One in chapter 4 verse 12 and 13 and Colossians chapter 1 verse uh, 7 and 8 and in Bible 23. In these three places, who was Epaphras? He was a prayer value. One of the secrets of the ministry of Epaphras was his prayer life. If you study more about Epaphras, we can know how he prayed for the people of Colossians and the poor and the believers there. Here in verse 12 we can see that he always prayed. What is always? He prayed constantly. And he prayed laboring fervently. He prayed fervently to the believers there. And he prayed personally. And he prayed definitely. And he prayed sacrificially. And we can see it from the life of Epaphras. What kind of life we are doing, my dear brother, brothers? Here Epaphras was praying fervently. He was praying constantly. He was praying personally. And he was praying definitely. And he prayed sacrificially. And we read the first stone at the end part that you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. Epaphras prayed for the believers there. Finally, in verse 17, we see about Archippus. Who was Archippus? Before Paul is concluding the letter to the Colossians, he told in verse 17 about Archippus. That read that verse. Take heed to the ministry which you have received in the Lord, that you may fulfill it. Take heed the ministry which Lord has gave you. Paul is mentioning two things about Archippus here. One for the first thing, take heed to the ministry which you have received in the Lord. All of us who know Jesus Christ have received a ministry. We all believers. Here, here Paul is saying about Archippus, the ministry that you receive from Jesus. We all receive different kinds of ministry in our life. We all have our responsibility to share the good news to others. Here Paul is saying that the ministry that you received from the Lord and in last sentence he said, you may fulfill it. That is our responsibility. Each and everyone who is sitting here, we all have a responsibility. That's what Paul is concluding. And he told Archippus, Take heed, take your ministry that you received from Lord Jesus Christ. Not only taking it, you should fulfill that ministry. The ministry that you received from the Lord. Pay attention to it, fulfill it, and work for complete it. We all have a ministry. God gave different kinds of ministry for us. In the field of family, we have different responsibilities we have. We should complete it. We should Tell others about the love of God. To proclaim the goodness to others. You know why? Because in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 10. There we read like this. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. That each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Here Paul told Archippus, 
take your ministry that the Lord gave you. Not only take it, fulfill it. Everybody who is listening to me, who is sitting here, each one of us ministry in our life, we should fulfill it. Because in Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10, it's saying that we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. We all will receive the things done in the body according to what we have done. Brother Kudor Park. God will come back all for us to give an account of how we have handled our responsibilities here in earth. Don't take it time simply. Take it seriously. Everybody has a ministry, my dear beloved. We should fulfill it. Take it seriously. Then Paul's statement that referring to the ministry we have received, that you may fulfill it. Shows that God has a definite purpose for everybody, for every servant. He has a definite purpose for everybody who is seated here. That is the central theme of the book of Colossians. And you are going to cross the book of Colossians. The central theme of the book of Colossians is from chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. They will read, For in him does all the fullness of the God and body. For you are complete in him. We are complete in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And who is the head of all principality and power. Dear believers, the fullness of Christ is available to everybody. We are complete in Him. And He is the all sufficient Christ. We need Him. But let's not forget that we have a responsibility as the believers to proclaim His excellence to this world. For this we should constantly watch in prayer and ask for the necessary wisdom from God. Watch and prayer and ask the necessary wisdom from God. May in the coming days, May God help us, not as a single believer, He gave us some responsibilities. When we pray, be watchful, be faithful, be thankful and be purposeful, and be walk in wisdom. Watch and pray and ask God for the necessary wisdom to live in this world. May our gracious Lord bless you and guide you so as to lead a prayerful life and be profitable in the kingdom of God. As we heard, may God help us to fulfill that ministry what the Lord has given us. Verse 17 again, take heed to the ministry which you have received from the Lord and that you may fulfill it. May God help us to fulfill that ministry in our life. Don't take it simply, take it seriously that God is desiring from us. He gave a duty for everybody. May Lord help us to fulfill that ministry in the coming days. 